When you go into the account settings area within 17 Hats, as you're going to see, there are a number of custom templates that 17 Hats has already provided for you. This, of course, makes it easy to go in, edit an existing template, whether it be an email that has to go out to a client or a contract that you're going to send out once the client has agreed to move forward. You can go in, tweak those templates, make whatever changes you need to to make them your own, and then use them in your workflow. As you'll see, it's very easy to go in and to use an existing template, or for that matter, create a brand new one from a blank in order to set up the templates that you need so that you can do the final part, which of course is putting that workflow together. Creating templates in 17 hats. This is the exciting part. Right now we took the time, hopefully you followed along, and if you haven't, I strongly encourage you to go back and you know, do this sequentially. There's a reason I'm laying it out in the order in which I'm laying it out. And I made the point, I think, pretty strongly in the last lesson that it's really important to me to outline your entire process, the workflow process that you're trying to outline in a document like Google Docs is what I use. You can do it in Word um, because it'll help you that much more when you're ready to sit down and actually create it in 17 hats. And the reason I'm telling you this is based on my own experience because I, I once sat down and tried to just go straight to creating a workflow and I started hitting a lot of friction because I wasn't prepared. I, I had to think through what are all the steps and what templates will I need in order to make that workflow possible. And that's where we're at right now. So we created the outline in the last lesson, right? And that's here. And this outline, uh, in this outline, I bolded things that are going to give rise to uh, steps that are going to need to be included in the workflow, as well as templates such as email templates that are going to need to be created. So in the write-up for this lesson, I just summarized. The first thing we're going to need is a welcome email. So let's go into 17 hats. We go into my account over here and go to account settings. That's where you're going to be able to access all the templates. And then once you're in there, right down here is my templates. Really straightforward. So if I want to create a new template, I click here under new template. And over here are all your choices. So if I want to create an email, I'll click email, right? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what I've created already here. I took my onboarding document, which is here in Google Docs, and I simply copied and pasted it in here. And then I had to fix up some of the formatting. It didn't come in with the formatting perfect. It just didn't have the spaces between the paragraphs and so on. Now, things that are linked, uh, you're going to want to just double check here and make sure that this link is going to work. So if I highlight the whole thing, it doesn't look like it's going to link. So I click here to create the link and insert link. And there it is. And it's configured to open in a new tab. So it's already there. So I'm just going to click insert to confirm. And that's that. And now when I click on it in the template, this appears here that kind of lets me know. There it is. And click on that preview to make sure that it's taking you to the right place that you configured it correctly. Really important, obviously. Now this in itself could become another step in the workflow. This is, I'm presently using Smartsheet to gather the new client information. As you're gonna see, I'll probably take a look at this in the next and final lesson, uh, you could create a questionnaire directly in 17 hats in order to make this happen. We have some other templates to create. So this was pretty straightforward. Like I said, if you have it already laid out somewhere like Google Docs, and I, I, I encourage you to do it there first, even if you don't have this created already, don't go straight into 17 hats and do it. Lay it out here and make sure it's just clear to see and, and get it all organized before you go into 17 hats so that when you do go into 17 hats, it's all really clear and straightforward. And as you'll see, I bolded certain things to make sure that it captures the client's attention and makes them realize, hey, this is something really important you need to look at, right? So hopefully when they see a weekly call for four weeks, that's going to get their attention and say, oh, how do I, how do I get in on that, right? Uh, we're going to get busy. Get busy with what? So it's these little sort of psychological triggers I throw in here by bolding certain things to make sure that the client sees that this is important stuff and you really need to look at it, right? And it's all in here. So this is a detailed outline, as you can see, based on what's going to happen. Now that the client has said to me, yes, Seth, I'd love to move forward with your services. So that's the first template. Um, I can close this now. Let's go to the next one. So next we could create that new client questionnaire. Okay. So again, I go over to my templates area, new template questionnaire. And as you can see, there's different forms of questions. So if you wanted to do it directly in 17 hats as opposed to Smartsheet, which is where I have it, then you would include this in here. And that's going to bring up something very important. If you choose to do the questionnaire in here, and it's also sort of embedded in the body of that email template that goes out, then let's go back here, and I want to show you something really important here. Under the type, 
it's a questionnaire email now, right? And then that way you're going to be able to link it to the appropriate questionnaire that should go with this. So you can create your questionnaire directly in 17 hats and that way you can have them include that. So let's see what else we can create. So again, then I have an email template with just section four. Just section four refers to my onboarding doc, which we can now go back into here. Uh, email templates, client onboarding email. So section four is here. We'll need to review your balance sheet. So this is meant to be a reminder that goes out. And what did I say here? Um, let's go back here. <clears throat> if access to accounting has not been made available within a week, we want to send a reminder with the instructions for this part. So we're just going to cut out that section four. And then we're going to create a new email template. And we're going to call this accounting access. Let's try and type it correctly. Reminder. And then subject reminder to give us access to your accounting file. And then you could even start with something like, forgive me if you've already done this. Forgive us if you've already done this, but our records show that you have not yet provided us with the needed access to your accounting file. Could be plural. Please refer to these instructions below to give us the needed access. And then let's bold that and then we'll save it. <clears throat> Next template, the client contract. So let's go create a, a contract template. So new template, contract, title, and this is where I happen to have this in a Word document here. So client service room, I'm just going to copy and paste this in. <clears throat> so client service agreement with, whoops, Nerd Enterprises, Inc. Okay. Now notice I can insert a form here. So insert token, I, I want to start with the date, probably. Which, interestingly enough, there isn't one. Okay, so we'll skip that for now. We'll say company name, address, maybe email address, phone number, and probably a contact name. We had the company name. Let's put the contact name in there. And we'll put care of, right? First name, space, last name. And the phone number. And then I'm going to take everything from the rest of my document. And copy and paste it in. And then we'll clean it up. One of the cool things is you get down to a, p a spot like this, and I no longer need to put that reminder in there. It's going to be templated, right? Because I'm already going to have the prospect's information in here. So let's continue cleaning it up because I had like page breaks and things in there based on the Word document, which I no longer need. And then here, by the way, is my description of scope. Now, this is the thing that... I am going to want to edit before I send it out to each client. So one of the descriptions in my workflow is going to be to come in and edit this template because depending on what resulted when I reviewed their balance sheet, I may or may not want to change some of this. Let's just get this right. Got my uh, 
mutual confidentiality clause. This just covers it because a lot of clients are going to ask me for it. I'm not too worried about you know them protecting my confidentiality, but I do have a, a thing in there that mentions that they're not allowed to disclose my rates to anyone because I don't want them to. I might increase my rates before they refer somebody to me, for example. So I don't want them telling people what my rates are. But mostly it's for them because a lot of clients are going to want to know that you know, I'm keeping their information confidential, which, of course, as an accounting and bookkeeping practice, you kind of need to. You kind of need to. Now, of course, my electronic signature didn't come in. However, we're not going to need that, as you're going to see here. In the, uh, actually, you won't see it here. We won't cover it in this course, but I can tell you that when the, the contract signing process with 17 hats is really cool, it's all electronic. Once they get this contract, they sign it, and there's just an electronic digital sort of acknowledgement that they've signed it. So I can get rid of all that and that. And I can leave in my lovely sentence about how we're really looking forward to working with you. And that's it. So now here's my um, agreement for services, all ready to go. Then we're going to need an email template to send out with the agreement, right, to let them know that it's time to sign this agreement. So my signature, I'm going to say countersign after clients. So I'm going to make the client sign it first, then I'll countersign. Let's save that. When you're setting up the workflow, as far as the contract goes, you're going to be able to uh, create a step in which you're going to actually send a contract out. And that's where you're going to associate the uh, email that goes out with that contract. So you're going to want to create another email template for the con you know, to go out with the contract when you send it out. So you might be thinking that as you're creating the uh, email template for the contract, you're going to want to somehow link it to the contract that goes with it. It actually gets done the other way around. When you're setting up the workflow and choosing to send out a contract, you'll see in that dialog where you'll be able to tell it which uh, email template to use to send that contract out. So it's, it's a little bit sort of, uh, I want to say flipped from what you might expect, or at least what I expected. Maybe you would have expected it to work exactly that way. But I say this just in case somebody else out there is thinking just like I'm thinking. So let's see what else we need to create. We're going to create uh, an invoice template for the retainer. So again, we're going to go to new template and we're going to go invoice and invoicing options, name, retainer, invoice. Um, we can choose online payment so they can pay us online. Of course, in order to do that, you're going to need to link a payment gateway to 17 hats. Um, I want to say due in zero days. It's due immediately. And you can, as you can see, decide if you want to do a percentage and so on and recurring. And you can do even a payment schedule, which is pretty cool. <clears throat> So now uh, these are the items that sh uh, shown for the client. So invoice items, right? So we'll add an item, and we're going to call it retainer description for a monthly retainer for services. Now what you may need to do, depending on if you have packages, for example, you're using my power pricing concept or a value pricing, or bottom line, you're doing flat rate billing, then depending on what the client has signed up for with you, you may want to create different uh, invoice templates based on what the amount is, right? Because you'll have one invoice template if it's $1,000 a month, another one if it's $5,000 a month, whatever it might be. And then for we'll just call it sales for now because it's not like it's not sophisticated like having a balance sheet where you'd actually put it into a liability. So just call it sales and then save this item for use later. Okay. Save. Boom. So there's my invoice template. Done. Uh, value should be greater or than or equal to one. Fine. Due in one day. Invoice template saved. You see how easy this is now? Uh, then we need the retainer invoice email template. So again, that's going to be another email template. And it's going to be an invoice email retainer invoice email. Uh, subject retainer payment due. Hi, so-and-so, please 
find your invoice attached and remit payment by the first of the month. Attach files, anything you need to do there. We'll save it. I'm going fast because, you know, I've already, I think, kind of covered it. I think you get the point, but I want to make sure I'm, you know, sort of doing this completely and thoroughly. Uh, payment confirmation. So once we get the retainer, now we can let them schedule that first of those four weekly calls that we promised them in the original onboarding document, right? So we're going to create an invoice template. Uh, payment confirmation and scheduling. And you know, it might not be a terrible idea to be a bit linear about the name of the template and what the subject is, because in a lot of cases that'll help you remember the name is where it's gonna how it's gonna appear in the list of templates that you're gonna be choosing from when you're putting the workflow together. So again, hi first name. Thank you so much for your payment now it's time to schedule our weekly calls please use this link to schedule four weekly one hour appointments the main purpose of this is to ensure that our onboarding process is going as smoothly as possible for you. Schedule here. And then for this, I use a, another service called Schedule Once. So I've got it bookmarked here under Scheduling. And I'm just going to right click and copy. And that actually pastes the link in, which does not need to be bolded. And now we need to make sure it renders as a hyperlink. So while I've got it highlighted, Control C, we're going to insert the link, paste it in, open in a new tab. Looking forward to our first call. Thanks, Seth. Save. What's next? So, and then we do the weekly meeting schedule reminder email template, which similar to what we did with section four, where we need to review the books, we put it in there so that if within a week of sending this payment confirmation they haven't scheduled, we'll go in and trigger this email template to go out. That, my friends, is how you get your template set up so that now we're ready to finally put the workflow together, which is precisely what you'll see us do in the very next lesson. As I always say in these courses, make sure that you've reviewed everything sequentially from the first till now so that you can be sure that everything makes perfect sense when you go into the next lesson, which is where we are going to put together the actual workflow that all this has been leading up to from the first lesson. Now that we've got our templates created, and it's conceivable that while you were creating them, you might have even discovered even more templates that you needed to create that weren't even in the original outline. We're finally ready to put the workflow together. And as you're going to see, this is the easy part because you took the time to do all the things I've suggested up until now. In creating the workflow, we're simply going to set up the workflow, add in the tasks and to-dos, and bring in the templates that are needed, and then create the triggers so that we know exactly what needs to happen for one task to end and another one to begin.